Hi there, and welcome to Basically Long Arm Quilting, featuring the Anova Autopilot Mach 3. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at the Draw Text feature that is available within Autopilot. Now, throughout the series, we've been looking at Draw Text when we were adding nodes and deleting nodes and changing nodes into curves. However, we haven't taken a look at using the actual words within the Draw Text to put sayings on our quilt or on our block. And as a bonus, at the end, if you have grand format embroidery, we're going to take a look at using Path Apply to really make those words stand out. Let's take a look! Alrighty, so over here in Autopilot, um, I want to go into my Draw Text feature. So I'm going to click on Draw Text, and over here on the right-hand side in our Setup screen, underneath the Text option, you can choose a font uh, name or font style that you're looking for. So underneath font name, there is a long list of multiple different fonts that you can choose from, just completely depending on the style of the font that you would like or the flow that you would like it to go with on your quilt. Um, underneath font style, you can choose how you want it to look. So you've got regular, bold, italic. There's a bunch of different ones to look at, um, and I recommend that you try all of them to see which one you like the best. So we're going to stick with regular today. And you can choose whatever font size you would like. Um, I normally start off with just the basic 25 because I'm going to go in and resize it anyway. And underneath text, you can uh, left click and type in what you'd like the text to be. So for the block today, um, I'm going to be using the title of our show, which is basically long arm quilting. So I can type in exactly what I want. And I'm going to click on create text. Now you'll notice when you click on create text that it is nowhere near um, your screen depending on the size of your quilt grid that you have. So let's zoom out a little bit and you see that it has dropped it down here to more of the center of our large grid, which is perfectly okay. Um, so to get it into our sew zone, we need to go to our transform icon and then click on the pattern. We can grab one of the outer square boxes to resize it down, pull it in, and then we can drag it and drop it into our sew zone area. So what we can see here, you'll notice that this pattern, when I click on it, is um, connected as one piece. Since we typed out that sentence in the text feature as one, it went ahead and basically combined these patterns into one big pattern. However, with the square block that we're working with today, I would like these um, texts to sit underneath each other so they kind of stack on top, so they'll fill up the block a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is this, we have this text inside of our sew zone. So I'm going to go to my sew options right down here at the bottom. And you'll see your jump lines. And this is going to tell me where I need to divide this pattern in order to move these words around the way I would like to. So I can see between Y and L, I've got a jump right here at the bottom left of our uh, L. And then between M and Q, it's going to jump over to this portion of the queue first. So that's going to tell us where we need to do our dividing. So I'm going to leave those on the screen like that. I need to close out of my sew options. I'm going to go into my split or divide function. I have divide selected. I'm going to click on the pattern where I want to do my divide, which is going to be right down here at the bottom left of this L, remember? So we're going to click right there. I'm going to click on Accept, so that's my first one. And then we need to do another divide right over here where it moved from M to Q. So we'll zoom in and we can click right here on this Q, just like so, and click on Accept. So now, if I go back to my Transform icon, if I click on these, now they're individual pieces that I can move around. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to move them around and stack them on top of each other the way I'd like to see them. So I'm going to grab this, move it over here. Let's move this out of the way of our crosshair. There we go. I'll stack it, let's say, right about there. And I'm going to move this one right about here. So I've got the distance that I want in between the two. However, I don't know exactly if these are perfectly in alignment with each other. My OCD starts to kick in. Um, Y'all know what I'm talking about with that. So I've got these in alignment with the spacing that I want between the words like this, but now I want to get them um, in a center alignment so they're perfectly centered. So I'm going to go to my Align tool at the top of my screen. I'm going to click on Align. 
and I'm going to choose my input of my mouse. I want to align them to a vertical line, straight up and down, and I want them to be center of that line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click anywhere on my screen. I like to use somewhere that I have a nice straight line grid right here, for instance. So I can just click right on that, and that's going to give me a nice dark line. Then I can click Accept for my line placement. That's where I want it to go. And then I can click all these words individually, there, there, and there. And now it's going to move them and be perfectly aligned in center with my align mark that I've used. So I can say Accept on this. That's going to close that line away. And I need to group these together as one, so when I move them around, it's easier to size them. So I am going to come into my Transform tool again, select my designs, like so, come up to my Group tool, and group them together. So I've selected Group, I'm going to click on Accept, come back into Transform, and now when I click on it, they are all one piece stacked on top of each other to fit in the block the way I want to. So, speaking of sizing, let's draw a boundary on our block so we can get it where we need to. So I'm going to click on Boundary, and I have an input of SoHead. The method here that I'm going to be using is Maintain Ratio. Through the series, we've been looking at how to use Morph to Fit because we want to totally fill up the entire box. However, I want to maintain my ratio with this text, otherwise it's going to try and stretch it past uh, what it needs to be. So I'm going to click on Maintain Ratio. And with the uh, head of my machine, I'm going to head back over to the quilt. And I'm going to use my right handle button. And I'm going to click a boundary around this block. Remember, you're only getting four clicks with this boundary. So we're going around to the corners. Just like so. And back at our screen, we can click the Done option, so we're going to click on Done. And then what I've got is we drew this margin um, at a tenth of an inch, so let's have a little bit of extra spacing around this just in case. So let's right click on our boundary, go up to Boundary, resize our margin, and let's change this to a quarter of an inch. Let's set that, perfect. And now if we click on our text that's over here, and drag and drop it in. Now it's going to scale to our block, and it will also maintain its ratio. It's not going to stretch it and morph it um, and stretch these letters out past what they need to be. So I'm going to click on Transform, and now I've got some beautiful text that I can go ahead and start quilting. But if you have grand format embroidery, you can add a little extra touch to your text by using Path Apply. So I can select this text, I'm going to come up here to my Path Apply tool. And over here in my Path Apply setup box, I have a thumbnail of images of all the different Path Apply options that are standard um, with your Grand Format Embroidery. And you can look at all these different ones and you can play with to get in there. Uh, the one I like to use is between the small and the large um, bean stitch. So I'm just going to click on the large bean. And you can see it's given it some extra boldness to the text, which is going to be, if I zoom in, those are your path apply stitches that it's going to be stitching, just like so. So I can go and save my project, because I'm ready to start stitching, so I'll save project. I'm going to click on Go, and then the machine, once I hit Continue, will move to where it's going to start. So I'll hit Continue. Machine's going to move on over. I'm going to take a single stitch to pull up my thread, and then I can press continue, and the machine will begin its path apply stitching. Now it takes a little bit of time to do this, but it really adds a beautiful look to the text. Um, it kind of helps differentiate um, what you can do with your machine versus what others can do, um, which is really, really cool. And as it's working around this B, I'm going to go ahead and tie these threads just to create a nice knot there. Just double tie this. 
and you can tie and bury these threads, um, that way they're out of the way and you can't see them. Just like so. So once it's done with that first portion that's going to do, it's going to be able to jump to the next section from there. Um, you have a tie feature on Lightning Stitch. You can press the tie button. And you can do some tie off stitches to lock that in. And then you can press continue and let it move to the next portion that it's going to be doing its um, stitching. So I hit continue again. And it's going to work away around this. It's going to get to its stopping point. You could come in with your tie feature again. This is what I like to do just to keep it steady and keep it held down in. And I'm moving the machine ever so slightly so it takes tie off stitches and then really locks it down. So I can hit continue. It'll jump. You can do tie-off stitches at the beginning as well, so you can hit tie and kind of move the machine back and forth to get a tie in, and then you can hit continue and it'll begin stitching. And all these little extra jump stitches that you see, um, you can trim those away if you're using your tie-off. If you're not using the tie-off, you'll want to tie and bury some threads. That way you can make sure they're locked in. Once it's done with that piece, hit your tie button, move the machine ever so slightly over what it's already stitched, that way it ties it in, locks it in, you can hit continue and move on to your next portion. Alrighty, so I've done my final tie-offs, pulled up my bobbin thread and cut it away, and this is the finished product of using your draw text with Path Apply. Kind of gives it that really cool, thick jean stitch um, look around here. It takes a little bit of time, don't get me wrong, um, but it's completely worth it. It leaves a beautiful look. But I'm going to go up to another one of our blocks that we've already finished and do just regular straight line stitching so you can see how fast you can stitch out text that way as well. So I've rolled the quilt back to block number four from the series, and I've got this open space right here in this applique that I just want to put a simple straight line text in, and we're going to put um, the year that the series was done, so 2022. So what I will do is, if we head over to the computer screen, you'll notice that I have uh, the 2022 text already on here. It went through the same process that we did when we did the text earlier in our draw text feature. Um, so I've got that here on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and save my project and I'm going to go ahead and click on go. Once I have the option appear for continue, I'll click on continue. And if we go over to our machine, it's getting in position where it wants to start. I see the preview on the screen, which lets me know I need to take a single stitch to pull up my thread. Pull up my bobbin thread and press continue on the screen. Machine's going to do its tie off stitches. And it's going to quickly put on our text for us. When it gets to its point, it'll tie off again to stop, and then I can hit continue for it to jump to the next section, and then I'll just trim my threads later once I'm done with this section. Coming around here, grab the next one, I'll hit continue, and then work through this process real quick. And to finish this process out. It really just adds a little extra special touch to your quilt when you throw on a little bit of text um, on there just like that. So we can pull up our bobbin thread now that we're finished. Single stitch where it stopped. And trim those threads away. 
So I've got that, and then since all these are tied off, I can come through real fast. Um, it's nice to have some uh, curved scissors when you're working with this, and you can get in and just pull these threads right up. Just like that. There we go. Thank you so much for joining me today and taking a look at how the draw text feature along with grand format embroidery using path apply can really help your text stand out on a quilt for whatever saying you'd like to put on there. I'll see you next time on basically long arm quilting.